What's cracking everyone? My name is Ryan, AKA Skeeb23, and this is my audio and tech channel. Today, I'm gonna to be talking to you about my experiences with the iFi Go Bar. This is one of the latest dongle portable DAC amp solutions from iFi Audio. Now, there is no Bluetooth on this unit, so its portability is limited by the wire connection you get via USB-C, and we're gonna get right into the technical specifications of the unit. So first off, it's just over two and a half inch in length, about a half inch thick and about one inch wide. So I suppose we could call this one a short and stubby. It weighs in at just 28 and a half grams, which is equivalent to one ounce. Now to compare, the iFi Go Blue weighed in at 27 grams, so very close in weight between the two. Now the Go Bar has quite a bit going for it under the hood, so let's talk about that next. First of all, it is a full MQA decoder and audio format start at 44 Hertz, all the way up to 384 kilohertz. The DAC is a bit perfect DSD and DXD by Cirrus Logic. Now on the device itself, you will notice a few buttons. You have the up, down, you know, volume buttons. You get the X base, X base buttons, which, you know, they show up on most iFi devices, which is really fun and a quick way to EQ some bass or stage enhancement. You also get an IE match switch that you can select which input you're plugged into in order to remove background noise and increase usable volume range, which, you know, in my testing does lower the volume, but also did reduce noise if needed, which I suppose is the use case of this. This is said to be something to try with more sensitive IAMs, which unfortunately the only IAMs I have are not very sensitive. They're more of the, there's no crying in baseball mindset. Also, you get to choose between four digital options, which are BitPerfect, which has no digital filtering and no pre or post ringing, uh, Standard, which is said to be the modest filtering and modest pre and post ringing. You get a minimum phase, which gives you a slow roll off and minimum pre post ringing. And then there's the Gibbs Transient Optimized, which is minimum filtering and no pre ringing and minimum post. Now, for the purposes of this review, I kept the digital filtering on default, which is the standard mode. And then there is also a turbo mode, which is another way to up the gain by six decibels. There are two outputs on the device, one three and a half mil unbalanced, and then one 4.4 mil for balanced. Side note here, IFI states their S-Balance tech will cut crosstalk and noise by 50% with regular single-ended headphones. Now, as for power, you get a whopping 300 milliwatts at 32 ohm for unbalanced, as well as 465 milliwatts at 32 ohm for balance. Now to give you a comparison, the iFi Go Blue got 165 milliwatts unbalanced and 245 balanced. So almost double the power on the Go Bar. So talk about raising the bar, right? Now after all, iFi boasts that this is the most powerful DAC amp unit at this size. Now I have no opinion on that as I have not fully researched the claim, but I'm still very impressed with the power output that this has. Uh, we will get into this a little later on, but it's definitely worth noting as the Go Bar is a step up in price as well over the Go Blue, which speaking of the price, the Go Bar retails at $329 US. Lastly, and thankfully, the Go Bar does come with a wonderful pocket leather case that fits perfectly, also two USB-C cables depending on the connection you are running, and one of them is made for Apple products. All right, so with the specs out of the way, what I really wanna get into was my experience testing out the Go Bar. Now, my testing started with downloading Tidal as I had no other way to truly test out the MQA function of the Go Bar, to which that led me down a brand new rabbit hole in this hobby, which, man, that's just what I needed is another rabbit hole. I have a new meaning to the word SSD, which is streaming service differences. Now I use Amazon Music HD for my streaming needs. My reasons really come down to convenience of the Amazon ecosystem being a Prime member, but also to have my family on this as well for convenient all-in-one system. Thankfully, Tidal has a free trial just as the other services do, so I was able to get that going for the purpose of this test. What I found is that no matter what, all Amazon Music tracks were showing up at 4448Hz no matter if it was Ultra HD or not. Upon digging in and asking community members on various forums, what I found was that on Android device, you cannot decode anything higher than 4448 with an Amazon Music app. It has something to do with the conversion in the Android system as to why it cannot decode higher. So this then led me to download and install UApp for my Samsung S22 Ultra phone. Only then I found out that the UApp doesn't help when streaming through Amazon. It will through Tidal and other services, however, so 
I mean, at least my money did not go to complete waste on that app, but still was a little disappointing to find. Now, I don't believe this is at any fault of the Go Bar, but I did experience constant skipping of the music when switching from Amazon back to Tidal. Now, this was only happening through Tidal, so I believe it had something to do with either the drivers in Windows, the app itself, or just some kind of bad combination of the software when switching streaming services back and forth. So ultimately, the only way I could AB would be to take notes, shut down the current platform before loading up another and then trying again. All while I was doing this, I was also using my Go Blue to compare to that. I had the Go Blue paired up with my tablet using either Tidal and Amazon in order to sound test the blue to the bar. Blue to the bar, bar to the blue. That sounds like a song. At one point, I had my tablet set up with the blue, my phone plugged into the bar, my Jotunheim 2 Modius plugged into my desktop, all while playing Amazon Music and then on a title to compare each track on multiple devices and same stream service. Wow. I impressed myself through the thoroughness, to be honest, but I was also getting a little fried from it all. And so here are my conclusions from all of this as best as I can put it. The Go Bar is indeed a powerful, portable, playable, plentiful DAC amp device. I powered my Aria Stealth, my Focal Radiance, my Aeon Noirs, and my Tenai Fi T3 Plus with ease. I used both the 4.4 and 3.5mm ports as well. What I came up with to my own ears may honestly underwhelm some of you. And that is this. The headphone is still the main factor into your final sound experience. Sonically, there were very subtle differences depending on the track and quality of the track played on both streaming services, MQA, and the like. Now, I do believe there is some magic going on here with the MQA decoded tracks on Tidal, however. I have no proof of this, and I wish I had my decibel meter out for these tests, but it's almost as if the MQA decoded tracks were either just a little bit louder, but I almost always noticed a difference when playing MQA. I say volume differences because as soon as I would turn up the non-MQA tracks, I started to feel like I heard the same thing. This isn't to say there are zero differences. Admittingly, I did notice some small differences depending on which device I was listening through, so there could be something to the MQA theory. I'm just not 100% sold on all of it as of yet. So this is where I will now talk about the comparisons. Now, to my ears, my quality meter did line up with the price in this scenario. The Go Blue, coming in the cheapest at $199, definitely sounded good, but lagged a bit behind the Go Bar. Now keep in mind, I did listen on the Go Blue via Bluetooth, as I feel this is really the recommended way to listen to the Go Blue. Uh, Bluetooth audio has come a long way, but it still doesn't beat out a solid wired connection to me. I did find one interesting thing. I actually preferred listening to my Aria Stealth on the Go Blue, as it warmed them up just enough to be not quite as sharp on the high end. Still, the Blue is a great device for the price, in my opinion. Now, next up, the bar. Uh, the bar was definitely a step up to me. The Go Bar is able to power all of my headphones a bit easier than the Blue did. I got a bit more clarity and sense of space out of the bar as well. Details were more present, and I just felt more in the music analytically with the bar. I especially noticed this on my Planars being Noirs and Area Stealth, honestly to no surprise. So, I mean, I enjoyed it so much that I now view the Go Bar as my second testing setup that I will use for future reviews, which I'm going to keep it at another desk for a portable solution. Now, the Jotunheim 2 Modia stack is my last comparison. At about double the price of the Go Bar, I did notice a step up a bit further. Now, shit has some very good power on the Jotunheim 2, and it's special in that you get some different experiences whether you're going SE or the balance ports. Still, is double the price worthy of the Sonic Performance game? Gain, not game. Now, I'm not about to try to answer that, but all I can say is it makes for a solid debate. I'm looking at you, Reddit. Oof. Reddit. Man, discussions on there get so bad. It's so good. No, so bad. Stay off Reddit. You should. Now, going through the last month or so of the iFi Go Blue and now the iFi Go Bar, it's really broadened up my horizon and total outlook of audio gear. I've thoroughly enjoyed listening on these devices from iFi, and I can see why others would too. So let's kind of wrap things up here. The positives of the Go Bar are its power for starters. I mean, there's lots of power here for such a small unit. It's portable, just as it says. The accessories are also a win to me as you get the USB-C, USB-A, and Apple USB, as well as a nice leather case to carry. Okay, uh, I gotta do this, but quick dumb dumb note here. 
I got triggered when I first opened the Go Bar as I saw there were two USB-C cables. One was for Apple as mentioned, and the other was for USB-C to USB-A. I could not believe there was not a USB-C to USB-C, being that this was supposed to be connected to Android and other USB-C devices, until I finally figured out that the USB-A is removable and just an adapter on the USB-C. Okay, moving on. So. The X-Base X-Space buttons, once again, are really cool EQ options on the fly that work really well. In fact, I love the X-Base with my Radiance on many tracks to give it some extra thump, but still struggle at times to use the X-Base, though you can tell the difference in the high end with it. So now for the not so positives. Well, for one, the device gets pretty warm. I noticed this more so when decoding the MQA tracks, but just in general, it can get hot. Now this is an amp after all, so that is to be expected and I didn't have any shutdown issues, just you know, something to note. Um, also the dongle cables are nice, but I ended up using a longer cable for some situations because they are shorter, it made for a somewhat clunky experience when plugging it into a phone and it was a bit stiff to hold in the hand. Um, then uh, there's the debatable aspects of the Go Bar. To me, that would be MQA and all the different bit rates the device supports. Now, there are many studies and conversations out in the audio world on whether or not anything over 48 hertz even matters. I'm not saying I'm one of those people as my opinion is still in early stages of a conclusion, but it's still worth noting that that is a main feature touted on the Go Bar. So there you guys have it. IFI, though I bought the products myself, I just want to say thank you for making such a good quality product that I enjoyed using. And that goes ditto for the Go Blue as well. The bottom line is now that I'm through with the review aspect, I just want to take one of the iFi devices and throw on some tracks and relax in my music. Now I can do that on my couch, in the car, sitting on the toilet, which is something I can't do with my desktop setup. And with that, I will see you in the next one.